Alright, I'm gonna try this again. This is less of a drunken knife review, more of a drinking knife review. Because I haven't had a chance to get drunk yet, but... That's nothing honey whiskey can't fix. Something I want to talk about today, I have notes this time, I'm gonna try and be more collected, is the Lion Steel Kerr. That's K-U-R. This is a knife I haven't seen as often on Reddit, which is generally where I spend my knife time, I suppose. Um, let's talk about what I like and what I don't like. Make or break. So, for me, what drew me to this knife was aesthetics overall. I saw it released on Blade HQ, I think, and I was like, ah, that's a dumb knife. Uh, but I clicked on it anyways, and took a look at it and what really caught my eye is this spine see how it's rounded off there and for some reason that caught my eye and I was like ooh that's nice and I went and looked at it more and the more I looked at it the more I liked it and ended up ordering it it was about uh, 160 bucks which is a little bit on the break side uh, which it's, it's not not a phenomenal price but uh, I think it's been a solid purchase for me personally uh, I think the more I got used to it, the more I liked the looks of it. Even uh, my mom, who's by no means a knife enthusiast, saw it and was like, that's a really pretty knife. Um, it's going to be hard to capture, but it's got quite a lovely stone wash on it. Um, and it's got Slepner steel. Um, I don't know what kind of steel that is, honestly. I don't have enough experience with the different steels to say whether that's good or bad, but it served me alright. One of my favorite things about this knife is the action. It's on bearings, uh, caged bearings, and it doesn't fall shut on, under its own weight. As you can see, you can shake it shut, but give it a little flick, and then a little snap here, and it goes, it goes shut pretty easy. Not too shabby, honestly. The size for me is a plus as well. Um, I have reasonably large hands. It fits them pretty well. Um, and I like the jimping here in the back. It's at a great location in my opinion. It just, right where I want it to be, and nowhere where I don't want it to be. And uh, for me, the finish is really nice. Like I talked about the uh, stone wash in there is really pretty for the most part your seams with the skeletonizing of the liners they're pretty pretty flush um, and there's a picture of your lockup for anybody who cares and one of my favorite things especially when I first got this knife was the sound it makes a nice thwunk I don't know how well that's carrying over in the video but it was one of my favorite features on this knife now some of the break things that might make this knife not worth it for some people. This knife is not the best ergonomically. It's okay for doing light gripping, light duty work, but this edge here starts to hurt a bit if you really squeeze down on it. That's pretty uncomfortable, honestly. And along this cutout for the lock bar, that point right there is the tiniest bit sharp. Um, it's not a huge issue. It's only an issue if I'm rubbing my thumb on it like that, but it would be an issue if I had smaller hands or was gripping it farther back or really bearing down on the knife. And in like a reverse grip like that, this knife does not shine at all. It's not made for that, but for me, I'm never going to cut anything in this grip. It's okay in this grip, not amazing, but again, I'm not doing draw cuts. I'm, I'm a light duty user. Um, the lock bar is a little bit stiff. Uh, if you sit in there flipping it over and over again, the center of your thumb is going to get a little sore. Uh, not a huge thing. Tiny little issue, but something. And uh, one of the things that bothered me actually early on, it's no longer a problem, but it used to be when I would push that lock bar to the side, I'd get the tiniest little squeak from the steel on steel just... I assume that's steel. I actually don't know. I know that this backspacer is said to be titanium, 
but I'm pretty sure the liners and the lock bar are steel. And so it didn't have any lock stick per se, but it was squeaky um, when you just slide that lock bar to the side. Um, uh, more on the make side again is the uh, detent ball is really close to the edge of the lock bar. I don't know if you'll be able to see that. Um, but the result is the distance between disengaging from the lock bar and when that blade is up on the detent ball is pretty small. So I don't have that point like you do on some flippers where you let it drop down and then you have to let it drop down again to get off the lock onto the detent ball. It just opens, it, when you close it, it just slides right over that detent ball pretty quickly. Um, you don't really notice it like I do, I think, on my 0450. That, that bothers me a little bit. Um, but it does not have it on this one. The big issue uh, also for this one is the clip. The clip came super stiff. It's a nice wire clip, but it was the stiffest clip I've ever had on a knife. I shoved cloth under there and just tugged and tugged and tugged and pulled on it to try and get it to loosen up a bit. And it has, but really it's it's not a joy to get in and out of the pocket overall. It's certainly a sturdy wire clip, but it's a little bit of a pain. On the make side though, I like how they implemented the wire clip. Those little grooves for the wire clip to sit in are hidden inside of the handle uh, scales attached to the back spacer. And that's something that I think is really good because it's still reversible, but you're not leaving that spot out in the handle. Uh, one other thing, more on the nitpicky side of things, is the action. While it's worked solid for me, in my experience showing this knife to friends or brother-in-law or whatever, um, it's not intuitive for people who aren't familiar with knives. Uh, if you try to light switch the knife, you're not going to get a full deployment. And if you try to push straight down, you're definitely not going to get anything. You have to flick backwards to get it to solidly deploy. I do that every time, just instinctively, but it's not something that's instinctive for people who aren't used to knives. And um, one more on the super nitpicky side is the tang sticks up just the tiniest little bit right there. I wish it didn't. It doesn't actually affect the knife in any way, but I wish there was a smooth joint across that area right there. That's something that the 0450 from ZT is guilty of. It's got a little gap there that bugs me. And um, the, if we're getting nitpicky again, but for the last thing is uh, even though the, the fit is pretty good overall in general, there's tiny little things around the screws. Let's see if I can get it to focus. There's just a little ridge there on the edge of the screw there, and the edge of the screw there, and there, where the screw is a little bit farther in than the G10 is milled. It's super small, but if you're super picky, that's probably going to bother you. The grind is solid. I like the grind on this knife. It's been it came super sharp. Um, there might be the slightest little bit of unevenness on that bit of the grind versus here but it's pretty small. Overall, I think this is a pretty solid knife. It's one of my favorites. I enjoy keeping it around. Oh, one more thing on the nitpicky stuff and the fit and finish. The tiniest little difference in the G10 and the steel and the jimping, it, it's like a difference of lining up. Instead of like this, it lines up like that. It's just barely off. But if you're super picky, that's going to bug the shit out of you. Um, but overall, that's the Lion Steel Kerr. I think it's a great knife. I like it a lot. It's one of my favorites. I don't plan on giving this away to my brothers or anything like that. That's what usually happens to my knives when I get tired of them. I think I'm going to hang on to this one for a while. So that is it for Drunken Knife Review.